uh, so I'm doing this video just because it seems there are a few things that you might need help with um, and a few questions that I hadn't answered before. Um, the first one is Hamza's question, can you insert or can you use sheet metal in a multi-body part environment? The answer quite simply is yes, you can. So um, what I've done here is I've opened this, um, as you can see, the, the step file, which is converted to a part file. So that's my, you can see the router MB, MBP test. I've just saved it as that file. And from here, it's very simple. So you go to insert, you can either insert an existing part. So I'm going to go and find a router enclosure. Let's say I'm going to put the base in, right? And then it's going to want to ask me where to put it. Um, Okay, and it's put it in the wrong way, which you can then um, move by using the move copy body parts feature. And you can either use constraints or go like this. So this is all the usual stuff. Um, 180 degrees, for instance. And if you want to go across to constraints, you can also then add a, say, a coincident between that and that add and so forth okay so oh, it hasn't haven't hasn't resolved revolved that but you can do that again by just saying move so that's one way um there you can see the the, the body is in there and the body is created somewhere else that one there um so you can't really you can't really do much you can't do any editing in here it's it's you have to edit that part elsewhere the other way is you can go insert um it is in here somewhere sheet metal base flange and so you would then follow the procedure in exactly the same way as um any other any other uh, sheet metal part you would either do you know you, you could either create a, a plan i'm going to do a a profile sketch i'm not going to fully define it um you guys know how to do that and what I expect of you there. So it's going to be something like that. And there we go. You can um, give it your your parameters. You can override them or you can do whatever you want. So from there, you've got your base flange. And from the base flange, you can add um, edge edges. So you can do all the same stuff as you would normally do in um, in sheet metal. So that's that's how you do that thing. Right. So let me hop across. The two other issues I want to see if I can help you with is number one. I see a few of you have asked me for help on um, doing your cup. So um, one of the things that I didn't show you because I thought it might be problematic, but some of you started using it is you've started using 3D sketches, which is a great idea, actually, not a problem. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to quickly show you how I would do that. It, you don't have to follow this. Right, so most of you will have a um, solid body. You would not have what I've got as, as a surface here. So I'm just going to offset this. Uh, let's go to features. No, it's in surface, I think. Surfaces, thick and there we go. So let's just make that similar to what you've got, 2.5. Um, so you can see that's actually just sliced through there. Right, so we've got an even wall thickness all the way around. Um, it does mean a little bit more work because I'm going to have to delete some of these faces. But uh, let's just show you how to do this. Right, so I'm going to go to sketch, uh, 3D sketch. And then, so just watch out that you don't choose to sketch on plane because that's uh, not going to work. Um, so then select a spline on surface. And here you can just begin uh, sketching your, your shape on the surface. The disadvantage here is that you've got uh, only, you sort of have to eyeball everything. So I can, I can revolve the whole thing like this um, and just keep sketching. Um, I'm going to do it like that just to save time for now and then I'll show you in the next step 
how you can how you can be a bit more controlled about that. Um, so once you've got it, you want one complete sketch. Once you've got it in there, you can go back and you can actually move things around uh, and you can play with these control handles, shorten them or lengthen them. Okay, so uh, as you, as you go. So once uh, once you're happy with your with your sketch, um, you exit the sketch and you go to surfaces and say under curves split line you select your um, split line and then you select the surface that you want to split and make sure it's on intersections so you split it and so now I can uh, offset this surface so offset surface by however much make it a bit more than that say 3.5 Okay, and I can either I can now delete these bodies if I want to uh, by just saying delete face, which if it's not in your uh, pop-up uh, tool it will be elsewhere. You can find it. You can always just go in here and say delete, and you'll get it. Okay, so once I say I want to delete those two, cool. So then I'm going to go again onto that surface. I don't have to select the surface. I can just go to sketch, um, 3D sketch, and then go to the sketch right spine on surface so here's what I suggest you do is uh, obviously now you want to be able to try and copy this uh, edge which I can't offset I can't do anything with I can't use the 3d sketch to do anything that's the disadvantage of this method but if it's if it's something fairly free-flowing like this it's not really a problem so I, I go to um, my front view uh, and this way I can I can trace um, that line um, more easily more accurately so it's not perfect but um, and then I just keep sw swapping views so I go from left to right I go to the next view um, sketch it in go across to the next view and of course I'm going to be able to uh, edit this once I've completed it, make sure you get um, a closed curve. So the last one, like that. Uh, right, so let's just move this one around a bit. Let's go up a bit. Which you could also do, by the way, in the view. You could just find that view and just see where 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 it is, what's happening. So I don't think that's the right view. Um, oh, all right. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, if you do it more carefully than I have done, you you could use the view thing just to make sure. It's a lot more accurate. So once I've got that, I can exit the sketch, do the split, uh, go to surfaces again, under curves, split line, select the surface, split it, um, can delete this face if I want. All right, actually, I, I suggest you delete the faces just because then you've got a simplified part. Um, so from here, you can go back to I think I've shown this to you before so it's a boundary surface select that edge this edge and now just to show you one other thing in here which might be quite useful is you can soften the edge by using either tangency to face or curvature to face uh, tangency to face if I go to zoom in here you can alter um, the effect so on this one you won't see it as much if I go to the top edge and select the end condition as curvature to face or tangency to face. They're very similar. This curvature to face is just a bit. Um, oh, selected the wrong thing there. I deleted something. Um, that's just a bit more. It's a bit smoother. So um, that's a G2 condition, I think, or a G1. Keep selecting the wrong face wrong item okay I'm not going to play with that but if if that gets a bit tricky then you can always go into this little box here and type in say a figure below 1.8 and there we go you see it's changed the curvature so once you've got that say yes 
So now I've got sort of a much softer curve. So the first thing is obviously you want to make a, a cup shape. Um, so we'll just fill the surface from here to there. Okay. Right. So now if I have a look at the surface bodies, um, you'll see I've got one, two, three, four, five surface bodies. If it said surface, surface faces, it wouldn't be so bad, but I, I need just one surface body. So the way to do that is to select them all. Um, in this case, I could just do this because there's no extraneous surfaces and I could just say knit surface. I have to do it inside there. All right, in the surface, create solid. Make sure create solid is selected. And if I go to my section view, you can see I've got a solid. It's got a nice solid face in there. Okay, so let's go out of that. But what I do need now is um, for the mold, I need to have, I need to get rid of this inside surface. I need just to not have that um, present. So I'm going to control Z to eliminate this uh, knit surface. Um, and I'm going to put in a the planar surface just on the top say yes and so now I'm going to knit surface but now I need to select only the surfaces that I want in the body okay so it's just those ones make sure you don't select of the any of the inside ones and say create solid so that if I now go to um, section view, you can see I've got a solid body. There is a surface inside, but as long as I've got the solid body as uppermost, um, I'm okay. So that's cool. And then I'm going to make a, an assembly from this straight away so I can make the mold. So I'm just going to drop that in. Um, right, and so the two things you can do here that I always do is I always just make sure that my planes I can get to them um, align so I just go there okay visually those two align that's great top plane I just select control select those two align if they don't I can just go here and I can say float and then it'll float and then I, I can just align them by selecting one selecting the other and using the coincidence I don't think it's going to affect it now it won't affect it now I'm not contradicting anything but you can do it but, but if they did not align and you did that then there'd be a conflict with with your um, float command you have to so your fix command so that would be float right so you'd have to fix it again okay so that's lined up that's great um, um, these are I'm not going to worry about that's from a previous practice session so now that I've got this sorted I'm going to um, go to insert components new part so I need to save my assembly I'm going to over overwrite an old assembly which is this one here say so yes save all okay and there it asks me for a new part which I'm going to select um, this one here tool and cavity right it's named tool and cavity because in Injection molding, the male is called the tool and the female part is called the cavity. Uh, no jokes about that, please. And so it's going to ask me which plane I want to start from. I want to start from the front or the right plane, front plane. Um, let's go to that. So what it's asking me for now is um, a body, which I'm going to, most of you or some of you, actually just one of you, that's Oba King, but I have seen other people suggesting something similar have got a revolved item which you've got an already evolved shape revolved shape to I would start with something sim simple like this um, you can make this square as well or rectangular but I'm going to follow what you guys have done here so it's so it's similar All right so uh, I'm defining the the rectangle and I'm defining how far it is below the cup and above the cup a little bit and then I just need to get these two to be lined up so that's gone black which means it's fully defined you can select it and go to features revolve boss 
If it does what it's just done here, you just have to select a different line to revolve around. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to save this. Um, and now I'm still in the edit component environment. Um, from here, if, if I want to use the mold tools, uh, I can't use it if I'm outside. So let me just go out of this. So you'll see that the mold tools disappears. I can't access them. I have to go into this part. And then from here, the mold tools does become available. If cavity is not in your lineup here, I don't know if it's in one of the standard ones. No, it isn't. You can go to customize, um, go to commands, go to mold tools. There's cavity over there. Just drag it into uh, there. I'm not going to do it because I've got it already. So drag it in, say cavity. Um, it's going to ask for design components. Um, that is what you really want it to do is to select the, the, the cut that you've brought in. Um, I had suggested to Abba King that these two need to be in a different order, but they don't. They can be in any order. That's fine. So um, if, you, if I quickly section through here, you can see it's got that piece in there. So I'm not going to use that. So the, the last thing that I need to do now is to split this mold. So I'm going to go to front face and I'm going to just make this transparent. So I want to sketch uh, which revolve, which is going to give me a revolve plane. So I'll draw that as quickly. Oops, uh, we need a sketch first. Um, so on the front plane, put a sketch in. Uh, so I'm going to just put in my center line as always. And then uh, sketch. So I, I I I can't select that line. I have measured the distance already in my model from that line to the base. So um, I'm just going to draw this in something like this and quickly dimension it. So 62 and give, give that an angle. That's going to be the quickest way to do it. Uh, I think, uh, 50 or something um, and then that's something like 20 that's okay and then from here to uh, I'm not sure right, let's give this a height that'll be easier okay so make that um, 8 right, and all I need now is from here to here which is 109.57 in my model should line up exactly which it hasn't uh, okay so I might have to go measure Let's just see if we can do it in here ah we can do it from here uh, it's a new trick I learned so that's 109.25 don't even have to go out of the model perfect so to put a 2 in front of that, take away the 7. Okay, so now I can see that that line lines up exactly with the top of my um, cup, which is exactly what I want. Exit the sketch. I'm going to just change the, the view, although you don't need to. So select the sketch, go to uh, the surfaces, sorry, surfaces, revolved surface uh, 360, that'll do it. So that, that there is going to be the basis for splitting my mold. So I'm going to go across to, um, I think it's in features. It needs to be features split. Because I'm, what I'm really doing here is I'm creating a multi-body part inside the surface. That's all a mold is. It's a multi-body part um, which uses, which subtracts the, the shape that you've got inside there from it. So part, yes. Assembly, yes. Um, it's, I've already selected that piece. If that wasn't selected for your trim tools, just select the, the surface. And then make sure it says selected bodies. And just be careful to only select the outside bit. And say cut bodies. And then you can you can see there's the top, which is, which is, which is, which is, which is. That's part, part one, right? So I can double click inside there or in there just to give it a name. So I'm going to overwrite one of the ones I've got here which I'm going to call the tool is the top bit say so yes and then I'm going to double click oh that's the mold okay it's given it the wrong name so let's just let's go back to uh, give that a cavity make that the cavity and then double click in the top one make that the tool 
replace it and say yes and keep your fingers crossed Let's see what happens right so there's a top bit and that's the assembly and it's not showing us the rest all right let's go out of this and um, I'm just going to open this 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 file here so that's a, that's in the in the assembly I'm going to open that whole part I'm going to hide this so we can see what's going on and then because this is a multi-body part I can't just drag this out um, I have to use the move move command which uh, move copy bodies if I select this body here and I drag it up something like that I can see if it's done my mold and it has done it perfectly top and bottom and that's how you do it all right uh, quick addendum before I uh, end this video um, I saw that uh, well some of you might be tempted to or have done something like this tried something like this 3d sketch using the spine on surface and then created some a closed sketch of some sort like that on the surface and then wanted to to see exit that use that sketch to um, to do a a, a, a a boss an emboss or deboss so emboss in this case uh, you'll see that it asks for a direction uh, so the way to get that direction is you need a vector let me just show you what I think is a quicker way than creating a 3d sketch is um, just go to your view here and just make sure that your temporary axes is, are available you can see them so I want the center of the circle I'm going to go to features reference geometry plane select that as my starting point and then select any one of these um, points on that curve where it goes to the center uh, to create a plane and then sketch on that and then you can um, determine the direction of the sketch as being sort of as perpendicular as you can get to that sketch so that's a quick way then you can go out uh, now I have two sketches just hide this one here so that's what I need to do a, a boss onto this using that curve so that will be my direction vector I can go in or out um, they're going to come out by set two millimeters uh, and you can't I don't think you can do let's just see you might be able to yeah I don't think you can put a degree in there uh, yes it has it actually has done that okay so that's the way you do it and then you could put you could put your your um, radii on here or your edge fillets uh, the problem with this by the way from a design point of view is it's creating undercuts I don't know how you're going to get out your mold unless this uh, item shrinks by a significant amount which it might do if you're using a slip cast molding loses a lot of moisture the other way I would do it though is I'm going to just get this go back up here is to do the same thing as I would normally do is 3D sketch uh, spline on surface right exit that sketch and then do the usual spit line so go to um, surfaces curve spit line uh, when you do it like this though you have to make sure that your you don't do natural split you you have to use a linear uh, split with that surface uh, did it do it yes it did okay so there's my split line then I can offset that um, so I'm going to quickly show you how I do this I would then offset surface by like three millimeters whatever it is and then on this um, I would then create another sketch features sketch you sketch inside there um, which you can kind of trace the outlines of and move them about um, not going to be able to show you how to get this perfect but uh, you've got the idea and then use that to split this surface so if I exit that then I can just use that to either split the surface or or, um, or I can do the what I did before I can uh, use the curves to 
to use a split line, but there's an e a quicker way you can just trim the surface. Using a trim surface, um, and then select this curve as the trim tool, and then just say whether you want to remove or keep selection. So I want to remove that se section, and it's done to be faster. And then delete that face. And then, of course, you've got, uh, you know, you've got a much perhaps more organic, uh, but a certainly a much easier way to just now create a boundary curve here, boundary surface, uh, which we will just use a standard curvature to service surface feature on. Uh, and there we go. Okay.